today is Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019, and it is 7.01 p.m. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you have been happy and healthy and filled with love for the last however long it's been since I've had a show. Um, I see Sandra in the, uh, in the chat room. How are you, Sandra? Uh, Sandra, I'm sorry. Um, so let's get right into it. Let me switch over here. There we go. So I have, uh, I've worked on uh, another art scarf, uh, yesterday and, uh, I have a couple of inches done on it already and I have a, a hem stitch here in the very beginning and this one is not, this one is, is much wider than um, the other one that I've done and in order to keep the cost down I am not using the silk chiffons and the organzas and the um, the rhinestones and sequins and all this is about 12 inches wide so this is going to be a big one. Hello there, River City Creative. Patricia, right? Did I get it right for once? Patricia? I hope. I hope, I hope, I hope. I hope. Uh, I'm, and I'm hoping that the colors are... Um, dang. Deborah, I'm sorry. Maybe you should change your name to Patricia. No. <laughs> I'm joking, honestly. Um, so, uh, like I said, I've got this warped on. I have, oh, I guess probably about 10 inches down of it so far. And again, in order to keep the costs down, I'm not using the pieces of sari and um, the silks and the organzas and the laces and the sequins and the beads. Okay, so I'm just doing premium yarns that are acrylic. They've got sparkle in them. They've, I've got some ship, ship, um, what do you call this? Um, chenille. Uh, I do have some silk in here. This is, um, this is recycled shredded saris that has been spun by me into yarn. So this is a ball that I spun up years and years and years ago. River is fine. Okay, River. <laughs> um, so, uh, so that is that. I can go get the other scarves. And to show you the difference between this scarf and the other one, I'll get that one as well. So hang on. Hold on a moment before I water. So this is the other scarf that I made, and this is nine inches wide. It's 86 and change long, so it is quite long, but as you can see, it's got lots of sari material in it and all sorts of expensive bling here's some silk chiffon with rhinestones in it um we've got all sorts of fun stuff in that so that was that one and this one is still available for sale on my website and this one will just be the premium yarns, like I said, acrylic, wool, um, silk, um, chenille, there's some boucle, there's sparkle, there's fancy braided yarns. Uh, this stuff here, that's, that's interesting. That's, um, that's this ball here that I got. It's a braided uh, ribbon style yarn and this 
I got at that amazing yarn sale and the price on the label was $35.99 a ball. So these are the scarves that I just recently took off my, hi Shelly, I uh, just recently took off my floor loom. This is actually a cowl, it's shorter. That was my boxy rainbow scarves. So this is a cowl. It's not that not that wide. My loom is roughly 20. Uh, I think it's 24 inches weaving width. So it's probably about about 50 inches wide. This scarf or this cowl. So that's that one. And did I see note spinner here? Hello there, note spinner. So that is the pink, the light pink one. This was the first one I did, and I felt that the pattern was a little bit too dense. So I took it off of the loom, and I, uh, and then I re-slayed my reed, and I made it um, a little bit wider. But, uh, so that's that one. It's still, still quite pretty. And it, it definitely will be a nice warm scarf for somebody. So that is that one. Here are, here's the blue one. This was the last one that I did. You can see that. So there's that one. Very luxurious. Yes, indeedy. And here is the purple one that I did. So there you have it. Those, I still have to wash them. And then once they're washed, I will uh, take, take pictures of them and um, get them up on my website for sale. I've also been approved to start selling stuff on uh, on Instagram, so you can look me up there on Instagram. I think they were pretty all all wound up like that. So that takes care of those. So let us begin. Let's see. I have two different colors wound on the same uh, shuttles just to give me a little bit more and I'm looking for my pedals and my pedals aren't here it's all manual this trip okay let's make sure that is correct yes it is when you use all of those different yarns in one scarf does it cause problems with washing and drying um, it most certainly can so the art scarves should be washed gently by hand basically just soak them a little bit um and uh, then lay you know and then don't wring them don't twist them uh and then they should be rolled up in a towel to get some of the moisture out of them and then laid flat to dry so that is the dealio with the heart scarves there's no there's no nothing that prohibits you from you know, putting all of these lovely things together, um, just, you know, care has to be, has to be taken when you, um, when you wash. And I really don't, I really don't foresee these things. I mean, if you wear them every day for a year, then, um, you know, I guess, yeah, maybe you should wash it a few times. But if you if you are um, if you are only wearing it, you know, for parties or for Sunday for church or on occasion, um, then you know I should think you could get away without washing it for probably several months. But I really and I I. I've seen a lot of people make art scarves, and a lot of them are very thin, and um, they have a lot of space in them, a lot of air, 
and I tend to like to make them, I like to fill them in a bit more. This one is um, kind of an open weave. I can still see plenty of negative space in there, but I do enjoy packing it down a little bit more because I do like, uh, I like the look that it gives. You know, like when you're buying one of an, an art scarf, you know, you're not buying a whole lot of air with with mine. You're buying a lot of yarn. So um, that's that's the way I like to to do them. Um, some of them, you know, are really really airy, and uh, to me that just says snag alert because I'm not careful with my clothes. Um, so and I have a cat. So uh, yeah. Um, if I if I had something that was really open woven, uh, it would it would get snagged, and that would make me upset. So I like to have more yarn rather than less yarn. And you can see this thing works up quickly. Especially when you when you're using the, the thicker yarns. And I think that's enough of that one. Okay. okay. And what one do I want to use now? Why not use the thin one? I'll go with this one. This one is predominantly purples and blues, but there is white and there is a touch of green here and there and a little splash of some red on occasion. So, uh, but I, I tried to use predominantly purples, pinks, and blues for this one. So I hope all of you all are doing well. Is anybody crafting along with me tonight? I bet Sandra's making some kind of beads. I had a whole bunch of short pieces of this that I tossed out in my yard last night. I figured some some critter would probably enjoy making a, a nest out of all these scraps for the winter time. So, so long as it isn't the, the squirrel up in the attic of my studio. Hoping that I'd see my son and daughter in law pop in. Although they're probably 
both exhausted with Carrie being back to work now. Maybe they'll pop in later. Hello there, Mary Hill. How are you, love? I hope you are doing well. I'm not packing it down real tight. So I'm, I want this to drape nicely. And I'm guessing that this is probably going to end up being about the same length as the other art scarf. So probably about 90 or so inches when it comes off because I do have um, enough left over for some nice long fringe and maybe I'm not sure if I'm going to twist the fringe or if I'm going to just braid it. There is there is ample amounts of it. So let me get that one. I'm doing well, love. Thank you for asking. All right, let's pick up a different one. How about some of this here? Oh, I love this color. This is just pow, right in the face. I love that color. Very, very beautiful. And I do believe I'm going to have to advance the warp a wee bit. Because we are getting kind of tight here. And I'm using the variable dent reed for this loom. These pieces, let's see if you can see it here. Here we go. These pieces come in sections. So you've got some really large holes here. You've got some really thin holes. So that is... Um, that's the that allows you to work with these really thick yarns and the thin yarns. Aren't these colors gorgeous? I can't get enough of them. Like I say, God created all the colors for us to use, so I might as well, right? I think I think he would be happy with this. All right, let's let's advance this a wee bit. And I gotta move it a touch. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I can't get enough of these colors. And this this chenille is just amazing. It's so soft. It feels like I'm petting a newborn kitten. So I'm not beating it brutally, I'm just giving it, giving it a snug tap. And we're giving it a good angle here. This is called the weaver's angle. And I do that because it takes a lot of yarn to go up and over all of these threads. So this prevents your piece from, you know, sucking in and getting a uh, an hourglass figure. Come on. Hubby bought an old table limb for me. Um, you will have to get new reeds, darling. Um, you can look on Etsy. For, uh, that's going to require metal reeds, and um, I would say that if you'd like to use thicker yarns, you would probably want a five dent or an eight dent reed. Um, and you will also, uh, if you want to do thinner stuff uh, like towels or thinner scarves or silk, I would say uh, at least a ten dent reed. And if you want to do the really fine stuff like 22 silks, 
um, and 22 cottons and bamboos and whatnot, then you're probably going to want a 12 or a 16 dead reed. So measure if you can find the name of your um, the name of your loom. Uh, try and find out what the model number is, and then you could probably, uh, if it's not a homemade model, you'd probably be able to find um, a manual for it online. Uh, but you will you will need to get new new reeds if they're really rusty because they will damage your thread. It was really nice of him. Yeah. It was like Sanjay when he discovered, you know, my floor loom. I mean, I showed him the, the listing, but he was the one that told me that is a baby wolf and it sells for about $1,700. So grab it. Don't even wait for the phone call. Get up early in the morning and start driving towards Tennessee. So that's exactly what I did. But yeah, if it has a rusty reed, you're going to have to, yeah, I mean, if you if you wanted to play with like Red Heart Super Saver uh, yarn just to get a feel for it, to see if it's something you're going to enjoy, um, you might be able to scrub the, um, scrub the, um, the rusty reed with some kind of solution that will get rid of the rust. Um, but it will it will make a mess out of the, out of the yarn. So um, you'll you'll need you'll need a, at least at least a couple of reads for it. Um, if you want to send me detailed pictures on Facebook, I can help you try and figure out what brand it is. Um, and I can probably find you you know uh, a good price on parts and whatnot. Uh, it is a lot of fun. It is. And it's very uh, meditative. I really do enjoy this process. Um, you can, but, you know, it, if you're soaking them in any kind of liquid, they're going to get rusty again. Hi, Linda. How are you? So, like I said, if you wanted to play with some cheap yarn just to see if this is something you're going to enjoy, um, then, you know, you can get yourself some Red Heart, try it with uh, CLR, and, and see how it works. If the rust is not too, too heavy, um, that might be all you need. But if it's really rusty, uh, I, would, I would say get new ones. Uh, even if you decide that it's not for you, um, you will be able to get a higher price for it. If you sell it uh, with new reads, this uh, this thing is not not cooperating here. I'm being right out of this. There we go. There, now it's not falling apart. Hello there, man. How are you, love? Thank you. You're ready to get back to your normal, huh? How's the patient doing? See, now that's one thing I wanted. I want to learn how to do note spinner. And is are are you Joanne? Um, I'm trying to remember remember everybody's screen names. I constantly screw up uh, River City. I keep calling her uh, Patricia when her name is Deborah, but I think I'll get it now. Uh, but Note Spinner, um, that's one thing I really want to do is I want to learn how to do inkle loom weaving and card weaving. That looks really, really cool. And there's something else that I've seen where you're using a floor loom. Um, so you're using this kind of setup, but on the floor loom and on the sides, you have a Luann, okay, all right, Luann, okay. Um, on the sides, you can do card weaving. So you can have a real fancy border running up the side of your project. And I think that is just so cool. So I definitely want to uh, try my hand at card weaving or tablet weaving, whatever they call it. 
I'm trying to convince Sanjay to build me an ankle loom. He's doing amazing, amazingly well, but you still have to do a lot for him. Yeah. Well, I'm glad he's doing so well. I really am. And hopefully you'll be back to normal soon. Seeing as how well he is doing. Okay, I think I've had enough of this one. And I might as well just flippity doo da and start using the chenille. Isn't that cool, Luann? I, I, I can't wait to try that. And I still don't know what my next project is going to be. It'll be on the floor loom. I know that much. But um, I'm not sure what it's going to be. Okay, where is the end of this? There it is. Now we need some of this. I want to do uh, a double weave pickup. Uh, double weave is a very interesting thing. You can you can have it stacked and then have two separate things come off the loom. So I could basically be making like two of these at the same time, um, one on top of the other, or I could join uh, join it on one side. So it unfolds to double width, or I could join it on both sides and make a pocket. Um, so, so to make a purse or a book bag or you know something like that, an iPad case. Um, or you can do something called double weave pickup, uh, where you interwine the lower level and the upper level together and you make a pattern and that's what I really want to try. So there's that and I want to make, um, I'd like to make my, make a crook bat, brog, um, what do you call it, um, rug or wall hanging. But both of those are going to require that I buy a substantial amount of yarn and uh, I really don't don't want to do that right now. The Monster Entertainment Center is gone. There you go. Oh that's awesome. You got your craft room back together. That is awesome. I am glad to hear that. So Luann, like I said, if you want to, um, if you want help identifying um, your table loom, send me some pictures. Hit me up on Facebook, and I'll see if I can help you out.
So it rained all night, and then um, it was still pretty dark and gloomy this morning, but no rain. And then all of a sudden the sun came out, and then it sounded like I had a tornado flying through here. The wind just started to howl, and it started to whistle through a window I hadn't closed all the way. But for the first time in probably 8 to 12 weeks, I can actually hear my, my creek. I have not heard it almost uh, probably since mid-July maybe, because it's been so dry here. So it sounds so beautiful to be able to hear the stream again. A lot of our trees are bare, and I think that the, we really didn't have much of a color change this year because of the, of the lack of water. I think the leaves just kind of fell off. They just said, I'm done. I am crispy. And somebody on Facebook, on one of the Ash County groups, has probably... 30 piglets that are irresistibly cute. They are half Cooney Cooney and half mini Potbelly Pig. And oh my God, they're so stinking cute. If I had some place to put them, boy oh boy, I would have myself a couple of piggies. I do like them. They're adorable. And you'd have no... No food garbage at all with pigs on the farm. They eat everything. But with the problem with all the with the coyotes and everything here, I can't I can't do it. Not without a safe a safe place to keep them. Yeah, that'll go. I'm still waiting on a guy to give me an estimate for my um, for my screened-in porch. Mr. Dinky Dinky Doo figured out how to yank the screen out of one of the doors. I went out there one day and he's sitting right by the screen that had been ripped out of the door. Why he was not outside exploring, I don't know. But, yeah. So I need to get that replaced. I am going to rent this door. Up or down? Um. I was so looking forward to Cranky Crafters last Friday after not being on all week. But PJ and Carrie got quite a bit done while they were taking the night off, that's for sure. So hopefully we'll have a Cranky Crafters this week. I'm 
itching to start a, a, a crochet project now. I was watching uh, somebody do something called interwoven crochet, where you're basically crocheting two separate layers together. And boy, did that look cute. This one gal from Holland was doing a crochet along with it. That's really cool. I got to get Carrie and PJ down here to pick, go through my goodies and pick out the craft supplies they want so I can sell off the rest. But um, basically, I don't think I'm going to go back to paper crafting. Um, my heart is really in fiber. Fiber and textiles. So I'll be selling, you know, scrap papers, hanky papers, wallpaper. Um, she loves stamps, so I'll probably all my stamps will be taken taken by her, but it's a 15-inch lily. Well, there you go. So now that you know what it is and the size, you should be able to easily find parts for it. I've heard of lily before, so it's not uh, an archaic, archaic uh, loom. So... And 15 inch would be nice for scarves. And, you know, even if you were doing, um, uh, like a, if you did double weave, how many, how many, uh, shafts is it? If it's, uh, at least four shafts, then you would be able to do double weave and you'd be able to be able to weave something that is actually 30 inches wide. So you could do baby blankets or shawls. So 15 is a nice size. This is a 25 inch, I think, or no, 24. This is a 24 inch um, rigid heddle. And my baby wolf floor loom is four shafts, uh, six treadles, and it is 26 inches wide weaving this. Two shed. Okay, so that would, you could do, um, hmm, basically all you could do on it is uh, plain weave. But, you know, this is plain weave. So that's all you need. And there's a lot that you can do, um, like, I, like you were saying, like you like the ankle looms. You could do a plain weave scarf with a tablet or card, you know, card woven um, border. So you could do a lot with that. And you get good with it, and then you decide whether or not you want a bigger one. Me, I kind of like jumped in with both feet. I didn't even look to see how deep it was. I got I got this one in in July and then I think it was the end of July that we discovered the uh, the baby wolf floor loom and I had already ordered the uh, the tapestry loom too so as soon as I started I was you know th three deep into um, three deep into weaving looms I would still like an eight shaft loom but there are hundreds and thousands of patterns that I could do on the four shaft loom so until I'm ready to explore all of those um, I'm going to stick with with my floor loom you finished the cane but now what I was not what you were going for well that's cool I figured you were making beads. Yeah. 
Oh, you just posted it to the flock? Hang on a second. Hang on uno momento, and I will get up, and we will go take a look at it. Okay. Let me pull up uh, the flock and refresh the page. Oh my. Okay, let's see. I have to change. You just gotta give me a second. I have to change. There we go. Wow, Sandra, that's beautiful. Sandra, not Sandra. Sandra. Wow, wow, wow. Check that out. That's gorgeous. Very, very pretty. Let's move to the next one. Very cool. That is really beautiful. Very, very nice. Okie doke. If anybody else is crafting along and you have something that you would like to um, post to the flock that you're working on, let me know. And um, I will switch screens and we'll go check it out. I am running out of yarn here, so let's there we go. Do up some of this color. Hey, potato! You made belts with the ankle loom and the cart? Yes. Yeah, you can do a belt. You can do all sorts of paracord things. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. I really want to try it. I just have to get Sanjay over the fear of having to uh, cut a a slide hole for the tension on the ankle loom. He's very worried about it. He has a router. He has a router table. So it shouldn't be any big, big dealio. Oh, I do love this here purple. And I adore this yarn. Um, this is, this is, Red Heart Boutique Midnight, and oh yum yum, that is just glorious. And it comes in all different colorways, and I think I probably have just about every colorway. Why don't we just start with this here purple? Okay, where did you leave off? Oh, that's so pretty.
Hello there, Mark. His royal spudness is in the house. How are you doing? I see you got your new choppers. So long as they can chop through a potato, you are good to go. Maybe some bacon, you know, because bacon and potatoes, you know, they were made for each other. See, this is, this is weaving up right quick like. You can't eat with them yet? They're just temps? Oh, okay. I was watching, um, I think it was YouTube TV or Hulu or one of them. I was watching one of the weekly sh shows I like to watch. And, um, there was a, an ad for Invisalign. So I actually backed up and I went back and I looked at it. And because uh, uh, our dentist in New York told Sanjay that the um, Invisalign has really, really changed the way they align teeth. And they now do much more complicated corrections. So um, what do you call it? Um, I'm actually going to see about getting them for myself because I keep biting my cheeks and my tongue. Like I just bit my tongue now. So my teeth have shifted in the last year or so and they need, they need to be fixed. You keep buffering? Your router, your router can't multitask? Yeah. Sometimes you just need to flush things. I think that's enough of that there purple for now. Okay. Uh, let's see. What can we do now? What color? Can we do now? How about some of this here stuff? Some of this here fuzzy stuff. Let's see if I can find the ends out of there. This is really nice and fuzzy. Okay. Let's find the end. This is a shuttle I made out of a pink stick. Mr. Dinky Doo is over there asleep on the couch. that back on where it belongs. All right, that's plenty on that. And now I can put a other color on here. How about some of this here green stuff. Isn't that purdy? You need to get busy. You have a great night, Luann. Thanks for being here. Let's 
wind up some of this here stuff. Enough. And we might as well just start with this pretty stuff here. So if anybody else is crafting along and you want to share a progress shot, just post it to the flock and then let me know in the chat room and I will uh, switch the camera and we can all go ooh and ah over it. You all do such amazing work. How are all your little robots coming, Linda? I have to convince her to start doing videos because my god, she's talented. You've been doing nothing but taking care of hubby, right? Yeah. You can't do anything right now. You can't get yucky stuff on your hands and then take care of his boo-boos. Yeah, that's a problem. Although, I think if you slapped a little Mod Podge on, on that knee, he'd be back in action in no time. Little Mod Podge in some hot glue. He'd be good to go. Enough. Let's change to some different colors. Yeah, here's here is some that heavy duty stuff. For, uh, for your robots. Let's use some of this here blue. This here turquoise. I do like it.
even buying some cool bits and pieces online. There you go. You probably do well on the uh, the Goodwill online um, auctions and stuff for like costume jewelry or doll parts or uh, tools, kitchen gadgets. I know you like to use the vintage cans though. And I have to advance the war pig in. It uh, goes kind of quick. There we go. Pop it down on the back. And let's. Um, let's try this white stuff. Okay, where is there? Is it there? It is. And I'm going to advance the warp again. You do need to get better dolly bits. Oh, drill bits. Okay. Uh, Harbor Freight. Go to Harbor Freight. They have drill bits coming out the wazoo. I love me Harbor Freight. And they have the, the diamond bits and all sorts of stuff. Harbor Freight makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. I do like my tools. Trying to get this so you can see it better. There we go. Hopefully that helps. Charlie Brown Great Pumpkin is coming on. Yeah, I don't have, I, I have uh, Hulu and um, YouTube TV and Netflix. So I don't, I don't watch, I don't have a TV. I don't have uh, cable, I mean.
long as my interwebs work, I'm happy. And I think that's enough on that one. myself a sip of water here. No, oh, let's play with some of this. This stuff is fun. I only need a couple of rows of that to get the effect. It's pretty thick. That's about right. Isn't that yarn cool? And now what can we do? Let's wind up some of this because I haven't used this yet. Starting to get cold here. I've had to use the heat in the dining room. We got a new heater in the living room. But sometimes I just don't have the energy to keep up with a wood stove. Especially when my back is hurting. So we had the um, propane heater in the library replaced so I can use that when my back is not cooperating. All right. I think I'm going to advance the board. That's one thing with these these types of uh, projects. You do have to wind the work forward quite a bit.
come on. Enough of that color. Right. Move to something else now. Uh, let's see what else we have. I haven't used this one in a while. Hello, little C. How are you doing, my love? Hopefully, radiation is going well for you, my dear. You're doing okay. It's going. I'm glad it's going okay. You've had two of the treatments now, right? So 30, 30 left to go.
I like these purples. Now, what color shall I do? Maybe let's have it here. All right, what's going on here? There we go. Let's finish up with this. Thirty left, okay. I have to stop and um wind up some more shuttles. What's the matter, Dinky Do? Master Stanky Dinky Doo. I love the sparkle in this. It's very, very sparkly. this up. And then I think I'm going to have to line some more shuffles. Hi, Connie. How are you, my love? Hope you are doing well. Okay, let's wind up. Some more of this here. Pink stuff. Oh, I love that color. Electric. Oh, 
I'm doing quite well. Thank you for asking, my dear. <clears throat> okay, let's do enough of that. And what else am I lacking? I need some more of this here chenille stuff. This is so soft, I can't stand it. Something this soft should be illegal. Okay, that should be enough of that there. Now we need another color. And what are we missing? Um, I think we're missing some of this. I'm just trying to wind up some bobbins here because I'm <clears throat> running low. So just bear with me for a little bit while I wind up. Okay, that should be enough of that. And why don't we use some of this little fuzzy stuff here? Aren't they pretty, Connie? I love these these yarns. I'm trying to do predominantly blues, pinks, and purples. But there is a, a tad bit of green here and there. Is that the bottom? There we go. Gotcha. And this is some fancy mohair stuff. Has a beautiful halo on it. Okay. Yep. Hello there, Mr. Dinky Doo. I, I do like green and purple together, so I guess the green is feeling bad. Green and blue go together, purple and green go together, and pink and green go together. So I guess an occasional splash of green is a bad. Yeah, 
and I have to advance the warp again because I am running out of space. Running out of room here. These scarves work up quickly. I've already got a couple of feet down here. Pardon me as I reach. I don't know if I, if I zoom in whether or not you'll be able to see any of the glitter. Let's see. Yeah, you can see some of the sparkle in there. See? There you go. Now you see the sparkle. There we go. enough of that for a little while. Okay. How about some purple? We haven't used purple in a while. Hi, Dinky. What you doing? Where'd you go? There you are. Hey. Oh, 
Here's my boy. Here's my boy. Mak mak. Na. Go snooze on the couch. Are you getting my place? Am I getting my place ready for winter? Well, yeah, I had um, I had a broken heater replaced. We have two uh, propane heaters downstairs that um, that we use um, when I'm when I'm here by myself. I, I rarely run the um, the wood stove because it makes the house too hot and um my back doesn't appreciate having to haul all the wood so um we have both heaters working now so that's good and uh we got a log splitter and i'm just waiting for the um evan's boys to come over and finish splitting the wood we had sanjay and i started it but uh we're both old and out of shape so I need I need the boys to come and stack split and stack my firewood. So let's see what color can I use now? What color? Maybe we'll have some more of this. It's here white still. Yeah, hauling wood is no fun, yeah. I mean, I've got the tractor. Um, and I've got the log splitter, but um, bending and picking up heavy logs and hoisting them up into the splitter and then hoisting them into the gator or the tractor and then hoisting them into the woodshed. Uh, no, mommy's not doing that anymore. My back is getting worse and uh, I'm only going to do the things that bring me joy. Otherwise, uh, mommy is not happy. It would just be delightful, though, if I could find people here in Ash County to actually do say do things. I get a lot of people that say they'll do things, but no one really follows through. So that is unfortunate. You know, I've been trying for five years to find somebody to clean my gutters. So it never seems to happen. Unemployment is so low here, people have the ability to pick and choose what they want to do. So That's a good thing, good thing in a way. It's good for the county, but not for us people that need things done. Yeah, I, I haven't, the boys, the last time the boys cut my lawn was the beginning of August, and it was up to my knees. And when Sanjay came down here, he was kind of upset, so uh, we got the boys to come and, and do the lawn once more. So that was good, but uh, the boys should be, um, if, they, if they won the playoffs, then they go to the state championship for football. So I don't know if they won the playoff game on Saturday or not, but... If they didn't, um, they should be available relatively soon to uh, do the the firewood. If they're in the playoffs, then um, 
it'll be a couple more weeks. Oh, I can't get enough of this chenille. This is just so awesome. I could play with it all day long. Okay, I guess that's about enough of that. How about, how's about some purple, right? No, I just did purple. I just then did some purple. How about some of this here stuff? Yeah, that's very true. That's very true, Connie. I have to pick and choose who I want on my property. I have somebody coming to scrap um, because I got, we have way too many coyotes here and they're getting a little bit aggressive and hanging out by the house. So that's not a good sign. So I've got somebody coming to trap and they actually know the property. They've trapped it before. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting rid of these coyotes. I've not seen a wild turkey in at least three years here. They have completely wiped them out. And we used to have hundreds of them. So yeah, I am I am uh, pretty pretty careful with who I invite here. Um, but don't be mistaken, I'm well armed. So <laughs> I will defend myself. I like this color green. It's very pretty. And it's all sparkly. Wow, wow, Connie is saying that they're that they're in town and they had three of them across the street from her, three coyotes last week. Yeah, one uh, one of them killed a neighbor's dog not too long ago. And it was right after that that I had them howling right outside my kitchen window and right outside my living room window. So that's when I found myself a, a trapper. It's funny, though, with all of the coyotes. I mean, I, a lot of people are against the fur trade. But, you know, if it's done with wildlife management in mind, um, I really don't have a problem with it. But the North Carolina fur trade business is in the toilet, except for coyote pelts. Coyote pelts are still going for a lot of money. So the, the trapper the trapper is not allowed by law to charge me for trapping my, my land. Um, but he'll make money on the pelts.
I told him I would, um, if he got a bobcat, because we have a lot of bobcat here too, I told him I would happily buy a bobcat pelt off of him. We have a lot of minks in the area too, so maybe I'll catch some minks. Still real windy out there, Chevy. Hello there, Sandra. You had to vacuum the living room? No, I'm just weaving along here. I'm not sure how many people are, are uh, still watching. Um, little C was here. She said she's doing well. She has had her third uh, radiation treatment. And um, she seems to be handling it well. 30 more to go, she says. And Connie is here, Connie Monroe. She says she's feeling better. I'm not sure who else is still with us. And once again, it's time to advance this here work. And... What have we not done in a while? We've done the purple, we've done the chenille. Let's do some of this here pink stuff, maybe. You're going to have to disappear again in a few. Nathan's on his way home, is he? I had soup for dinner. I was cold. What are you making for, for dinner, Sandra? Oh, he was home today with his day off. Okay, that's nice. So you get to spend spend some time with him. So you didn't get much accomplished. Yeah, well.
Turkey burgers and french fries. That works. I haven't had a turkey burger in quite a while. Those can be really good. By the way, I can't remember. I don't know if we got them at Costco or what. Probably about five or six years ago, Sanjay and I discovered some turkey burgers that were really, really good. I can't remember where we got them. I don't know if it was a restaurant or a cook at home meal. I don't know. You had a frozen burger and tater tots that works. We need more yarn here. I haven't used any of this here pink in a while. Let's see if so that. I, uh, my favorite type of soup is um, it's an Indian soup and it's called sambar. And it's usually, it's S-A-M-B-H-A-R. Um, and it is a tomato and lentil base with lots of spices. And um, it's thick and delicious. Um, so I, I make that. And then there's a semolina. Um, there's a semolina or farina. Um, I think it's farina. Uh, it's an Indian side dish called um, uh, up, upma. U P M A or H A. Um, and has it has spices in it and stuff. And it's, it's real hearty. So I I made that. It's quick, it's easy, tastes good, warms me up. I like scrambled egg and cheese sandwiches. The Rotans taught me how to make really amazing egg sandwiches. Um, like during the winter on Sundays after church, we'd go back to their house and... Um, He'd scramble up a dozen eggs and put um, he'd put um, the mayonnaise on the table, the bread, the sriracha, cheese, and we would just take plain sandwich bread uh, with mayonnaise on it and sriracha on it and pile on some scrambled eggs and cheese. Man, those are good. I know, yeah, those turkey burgers I was talking about. I remember them not last year, but the year before, I think. We got them maybe at Costco, because uh, I remember we had them here when PJ and Carrie were down here. PJ had to, uh, he has gout, so he, has to, he can't eat a lot of red meat. So we got uh, the turkey burgers, and man, they were delicious.
trying to get a better angle for you all here. Enough of that pink there for a while. Oh, I do believe. And I'm going to go take a run over. Oh, yes, you do, um, Connie. Uh, I have. Oh. I mean, uh, a little C. I have my uh, police scanner on in the dining room, and I forget to turn it off before I come in here, so that is what you are hearing in the background. And I tweaked my back. So, hang out here. I'm just going to see if I can find some more yarn. to use. I have this here. Oh, I didn't even know I had this. Now that's a pretty color. That there is pretty. That is the Red Heart Boutique Midnight, and it is in the colorway Claire de Lune. So I believe I need to use some of that. Maybe a lot of that. Let's see if we can find the guts. Oh, yeah, I'm liking that color. I got to get me some more of that yarn. I got plenty of it, I think. I think I've got plenty of it, so. I have at least another ball. I've got, I might have more of it. Packed away in another crate somewhere. Hello there, Mr. Dinky Doo. What you doing? Getting into trouble? There we go, almost all wound up. There we go. Take care of that. And on the other side, I can put, I have another chenille, and it's a pretty green color. That's a pretty color. 
Mr. Dinky Doo has vanished. He was making his rounds, I guess. Making sure that no mischief was being had without him. Because I think that's illegal or something. Or something like that. Okay. How about a chunk of this here dark blue? Let's do that for a while and see where, see where it takes us. And we're going to have to advance again. Seems to be happening a lot. Which means that this scarf will be made relatively quickly. There we go. Oh, I, I went a wee bit too far. Hang on. Hold the phone. Oh. Hold the phone. There we go. That's a little better. Okay. I hear the coyotes howling again. I hear them. At this rate, I should have this thing done by tomorrow. That would be good. Get it up on my website. Quickly. And I think I think that'll be enough of that there. That there dark blue stuff for a while. Come on, get in there. And that is too similar of a color to have a light on it. Let's do let's do some of this. We're gonna use this in a while. This is really lumpy, bumpy stuff. Very soft. It's like, again, it's like the chenille. It's like a baby kitten made out of velvet or a baby lamb. It's very soft and very cookie.
in a while. Let's wind some of that on. So Sandra, are you are you still here? I'm wondering I'm wondering how your how your weather's been. Is it still so beastly hot or did it cool off? I have a new weaving buddy who lives on the front range of Colorado and uh, she had her first um, winter storm already. I think it was like, like an ice ice storm and she uh, it, it was gone in like two days and it, it was back up to the 60s. Yep, the more you do it, uh, Carrie, the more the more you weave, the faster you get at it. Same thing with knitting or crocheting or anything like that there. Although I'm still a slow and clumsy knitter. <clears throat> so I like to uh I, I, if I if I have to choose between knitting or crocheting, I usually do crochet. Okay, time to advance the warp. So did it cool off there at all for you, Sandra? Oh, I think I can go one or two. One or two more. Ah. Man, it's this footy down here. I don't know if I can show it to you or not, but you can see it. That's probably about three, three feet long by now. Let's see, that's enough of that there, Tom. Now what color can I do? I haven't done purple in a while. Get some of that there purple stuff on here. Slowly but surely, yes, it's starting to cool off. There you go. You're out of the three digits until next summer. Yeah, I, I watch uh, Weed em and Reef. It's a YouTube homesteader channel, and they live in Phoenix. And they say, yay, it finally cooled off. Now we can finally grow lettuce and tomatoes. And, and to them, cooled off is 95 degrees. But it's a dry heat, right? It's a dry heat.
Nights are dipping into the high 30s and 40s. There you go. That's what I like. Our evenings have been uh, in the 50s the last couple of days. We had gotten into the high 30s last week. But this week it seemed to have warmed up again, so I'm hoping it'll cool off again. Because I like a cold bedroom. Unlike Sanjay, who likes a, likes a sauna bedroom. He likes it hot. Not me. Daytime is 80 or 90. 80 or 90 if it's dry, low humidity isn't, isn't that bad. But if it gets humid, yeah, mommy's not happy. I don't like humid. Oh, you and Nathan have to move to the mountains in North Carolina, Sandra. It's gorgeous here. It is gorgeous here. We had a very humid summer, though, and that's so not like us. Um, if you go down in the foothills, like Wilkesboro, oh, my God, that's, that's disgusting. That's an armpit. It's really miserable. But up here in the mountains, it's beautiful. Humid sucks. It certainly does. Now it's getting back a little purple. We are in a gray patch. Okay, Sandra. Sandra's got to go get her turkey burgers and her french fries ready. I need to get myself some hamburgers. I ran out. Anybody here use an air fryer? I have a silly question. I have an air fryer and I'd like to try something and I'm just curious as to whether or not anyone else has tried it. Oh, I might as well finish using this up.
electronics. Chenille stuff. That's enough of that. Okay, what am I going to do now? Maybe some of this here blue stuff. Find an end. There we go. Let me advance this warp a wee bit. bit more. There we go. <clears throat> I 
Hi, Dinky. What you doing? I think. Everybody's quiet in the chat room. Who's working on something? I know Sandra's making beads. She's always making beads. Who else is doing something? Oh, my God. All right, maybe, 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 maybe. I can do some of this blue. Let's find the end there. We go.
Alrighty guys, I think I'm gonna end here. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any anybody chatting in the chat room. Don't how many people are still watching, but I figure I'll let you I'll let you all go because I'm just gonna be doing more of the same. And it looks like I'll probably have this thing finished probably tomorrow. And maybe I'll take it into the dining room with me this evening and work on it some more. So if you're new to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And um, give the video a thumbs up before you leave. And uh, consider coming on over to uh, join my group on Facebook called The Flock. We have a nice friendship swap over there. And uh, you can catch me on Instagram, and you can check my website to see what pieces I have available for sale. I do have another one of these art scarves up there, and I've got um, some other scarves that I'll have washed and up there shortly. So I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I do so appreciate it. I love you all, and I will talk to you all very, very soon. Good night, vloggers.